carried, serving the poor and the sick. And after the death of her husband, she joined the third Franciscan order, where she continued serving the poor and the sick, and she is the patron of the third Franciscan order and Catholic charities. We pray through her intercession that we may discover Jesus from those who suffer, those abandoned. We continue praying for the souls of the faithful departed whose names are inscribed in the envelopes in front of the altar that they may rest in peace through intercession of St. Elizabeth of Hagari. With all our particular intention, we begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed name of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose gift St. Elizabeth of Hagari recognized and revered Christ in the poor, Grant through her intercession that we may serve with unfailing charity the needy and those afflicted. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. All men were by nature foolish who were in ignorance of God, and who from the good things seen did not succeed in knowing him who is, and from studying the works did not discern the artisans. But either fire, or wind, or the swift air, or the circuit of the stars, or the mighty water, or the luminaries of heaven, the governors of the world, they considered gods. Now, if out of joy and their beauty they thought them gods, let them know how far more excellent is the Lord than these. For the original source of beauty fashioned them. Or if they were struck by their mighty, their might and energy, let them from these things realize how much more powerful it is who made them. For from the greatness and the beauty of creating things, the original order by an analogy is seen. But yet, for these, the blame is less. For they indeed have gone astray, perhaps, though they seek God and wish to find him. For they search busily among his works, but are distracted by what they see, because the things seen are fair. But again, not even those are personable. For if they have so far succeeded in knowledge that they could speculate about the world, how did they not more quickly find its Lord? The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word today, and night to night in 
imparts knowledge. That the angels are the glory of God. Not a word nor a discourse with voice is not heard. To all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. The hands proclaim the glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 Stand erect and raise your heads because your redemption is at hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. I'm reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Similarly, as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building. On the day when the Lord left Sodom, fire and brimstone rained from the heaven, from the sky to destroy them all. So it will be on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, someone who is on the housetop and whose belongings are in the house must not go down to get them. And like Likewise, one in the field must not return to what was left behind. Remember the wife of Lord. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it. But whoever loses, his, loses it will save it. I tell you, on that night, there will be two people in one bed. One will be taken, the other left. And there will be two women grinding meal, meal together. One will be taken, the other left. They said to, one, to him in reply, Where, Lord? He said to them, Where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Psalm invites us to focus on the beauty of creation. Looking at creation, we are so happy, we are so satisfied. But this creation should make us transcend to meet God in them, to give glory to God. Creation proclaims the glory of God. St. Thomas of Aquinas proved the existence of God one of the ways is through creation. The moment you see how things are arranged in the world, the moment you see the beauty of these things, then you ask yourself, who did this? There should be a supernatural being. So as we continue enjoying the, the creation, the fruits of creation, we continue thanking God for what he has given us. In the first reading, is reminding us that as we continue focusing on the present, we should also use the present for tomorrow. The present should be useful for tomorrow. We should not stop on the, at the present. Let us think of tomorrow where we shall meet the Lord face giving accountability of our lives said is only men who are nature by him, who, who are nature foolish who can say there is no God. Whoever says there is no God is a fool because even his real existence was brought in by God. It is only foolish 
to think that there is no God. For all men who were ignorant of God were foolish by nature. And they were unable from the good things that are seen to know Him who exists, nor do they recognize the craftsmen while, of play, while paying heed to His works. In fact, in the world today, there are many people who do not believe in the existence of God. Even in our communities, the number is speedily increasing those who do not accept God, who do not believe in God. Given the hardships we faced by many populations at our time, during our time, you find that many young people, old people, middle age, are turning to religion as a solution to find in their life and invoking God's intervention. And however, some fall into the hands of some God's leaders who mislead them and remembering the words of Jesus, wolves in sheep's clothing, like lambs among the wolves. Do not be deceived that there is a miracle wealth, a miracle done for wealth when you don't work for it. And some of the, our youth are like that. They want to achieve wealth without working for it. Or there is a miracle for a job without you submitting the application or studying to, to be qualified. Giving all what you have to the church in order to multiply your riches or material is totally mistaken and erroneous conviction. The church is not an investment center. Instead, the church helps us to meet God, helps us to be pure and perfect, is a place for salvation of souls. Jesus did not replace the governments or the leaders, political leaders, but he came to lead us to heaven. Jesus fed the hungry, cured the, the sick, but it was only to lead them to encounter God in their lives. And in feeding the hungry, he wanted them to encounter God in the Eucharist. He wanted them to encounter himself after his death in the Eucharist. On the other hand, some consider themselves too enlightened, too wise to believe in God's existence. In fact, to the wisdom of God, they are nothing. My dear friends in Christ, Recently, I saw an interview of a little boy who said that his mother created him, not God. Why did he say that in the interview? For him, since God has never done anything for him, he has never touched God, he has never seen God physically, therefore, there is no God. In the same understanding, the book of wisdom which we have just read, the first reading tells us that it is foolish to think that there is no God. Maybe you have not met him physically. God is not a material thing. He's a spiritual, divine being. Merely looking around us tells us that without the work of an intelligent being, beyond our imagination, there will be no order in the nature. For St. Paul adds, for what, we, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, namely his eternal power, has been perceived in the things made, so they are without excuse. Jesus continues teaching us that we do not know the day or the hour when we will be called to give an account of our lives. Just as it is foolishness to deny that God exists, it is foolishness to ignore God's instructions. We have to observe keenly and attentively the present signs for the good and salvation of our souls. Living as if your life belongs to you is a mistaken conviction. Without God, we are nothing. 
learn from St. Augustine, who at the beginning denied the existence of God. He never believed in God. He wanted to enjoy his life. Did he enjoy it? At the end of time, it was an emptiness. And he said, long have I looked for you while you are inside me. Let us not take things for granted. At the time of Noah, at the time of Lord, people were eating, drinking, marrying, selling things, and they forgot the existence of God. Even our time, maybe we, we have many challenges at home, many things to be accomplished at home. We don't give God right time of meditation. Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, she gave God her right time. She meditated about the divine mysteries, the sacred heart of Jesus. And to her, finding Jesus was all she needed in her life. Even after the death of her husband, she was ready to give all the riches to the poor. And she ended up building a hospice, helping those people who were in terminal diseases, giving herself totally, dedicated to the poor in order to serve Jesus. Are we dedicated to the poor? Are we dedicated to, to Jesus? How do you do that? Each one of us has a different way of doing it. You might not imitate St. Elizabeth. Do it in your own way, with love, with charity from the heart, and we shall remain a cornerstone in the Church of Christ. Almighty ever living God, grant me divine wisdom to know you, to love you, and to serve you with undivided heart and mind in my brothers and sisters, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God created the beauty of heaven and earth with confidence in his saving power. Let us offer our prayers this day for the pilgrim church on earth. May God grant us the grace to live in readiness and strive to save our lives by losing them. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For public authorities, may the light of Christ illumine their decision-making in their efforts to respect the dignity of life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all those who thirst for light in situations of great darkness. May God's love lead them to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. For this family of faith, may God's love grow in our hearts and help us extend our hands to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. For those who have gone before us in faith, May God welcome them to heaven to join the church triumphant in endless praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Amen. For our special petitions and prayers, we offer them to the Lord in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, you know all things. Please hear and answer these prayers according to your wisdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
sacrifice and yours may be accepted with God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate the Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of Saint Elizabeth of Hazard, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's all right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you made your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us your signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the child's and once more gave him thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the child of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chance of salvation, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread from the world, and bring us the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in the mercy. Welcome them to the life of the peace. And Master and soul, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph as well, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be coerced to eternal life, you may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant grace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us hold each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, we take our medicine. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that we who are renewed by the sacred mysteries may follow the example of Saint Elizabeth, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you. Father, 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. And enjoy the rest of your day. Saint Michael, the Archangel. Amen. Amen.